Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Yes, Hungary has finally finished and oh my god, what a bore fest that was. But anyway, I first want to start with the qualifying. I have to say I was pretty impressed with the qualifying session. I think they may be onto something here. I'm just thinking now, are some of the back market teams sort of holding back on their tyre compounds for the race? And because it was equalised, all having to run on the hard, the medium and the soft, did this sort of bring forward some of the teams that wouldn't usually be there? I mean, those Alfa Romeo certainly were brought more forward to the front. It would be nice to have another little experiment with that qualifying session because it didn't really sort of take anything away from the qualifying. It, they were just all running on the same tyre. So, yeah, I would like another experiment with the qualifying to see if that is actually something that can be used in the future because I was very impressed with the qualifying session. Anyway, so on to the race we go and... Oh God, oh God, no, 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 how could you do this to us, Lulu? We were so looking forward to an exciting Grand Prix full of drama and more drama and even more drama and what did we get? Bloody nothing, an absolute damp squid. You couldn't even hold on to the lead to turn one, Lulu. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't believe it. I've got to blow that picture up now just, just to show you all at home. Look, look, there he was. he was. He was just ahead of Max there, but not for very long. And then Max Verstappen got past. And that was it. That was it for the race. Oh my god. I was just so excited for Lulu being in the lead. And I, I was just hoping we were going to get a really excited race. And it was just gone. And Lewis Hamilton, I have to say, I don't know what he was doing in that race. No idea. He lost nine seconds at one point. Even he was confused as to how he lost that amount of time. And yeah, it, really, the car was up and down. And towards the end of the race, he was like a rocket ship. Unbelievable. Something, there's definitely something wrong with that Mercedes car. Definitely. It's not consistent over a full run. It really isn't. It's really up and down, whereas you can clearly see by the Red Bull, they've got this complete straight line of performance. It doesn't seem to fold. It doesn't seem to go down. It doesn't seem to go up. It's just a complete straight line. Whereas Lewis, well, you know, if he was in the hospital, the doctors would be quite concerned for his car right now. Yeah, because he, he's up, down, up, down, up, down, you know? It's not good. It's not good for old Lulu. So there you go. Unfortunately, we were deprived of a great race. Yes, Lulu was on pole and he blew it. He bloody blew it. I don't believe it. Lulu! I bet poor old Bono got it right in the neck. Right in the neck after that race, I tell you. I just hope his pizza wasn't cold, otherwise that would have been it. That would have been it. Unbelievable scenes. Unbelievable. One thing that did surprise me a lot was this first sort of turn incident. If I can make myself a little bit smaller here. It's the first turn incident where, of course, both the Alpines had a little altercation. Daniel Ricciardo was the instigator, but it wasn't his fault because he got rammed from behind by another driver. And, uh, yeah, so he went into the one of the Alpines, the other Alpine went into them, and both the Alpines retired. Poor Ryan Reynolds, who, don't forget, has just bought a 25% stake in Alpine, was crestfallen. <laughs> really really upset it was like yeah that's 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 heartbreaking he said absolutely heartbreaking and it was very heartbreaking to see both the alpines out pretty much from the start well one was and the other one sort of limped down for another lap and then ocon was out as well so yeah not good not good can't really blame daniel for that it was really a racing incident the one thing i would like to say is a special message to helmet marco and that is well done, Helmet. Well done indeed. You have swapped a 15-place um, finisher in Nick De Vries for a 13th-place finisher in Daniel Ricciardo. So i just like to say, well done. Great work indeed. Great work indeed. Yes, fantastic. Can't wait. Now, of course, I predicted that Daniel Ricciardo would finish in 17th place. I was getting really excited because he was he was around that 17th to 18th position for quite a few laps uh, during that race. I was going, yes, come on. But no, he did manage to crawl him way up into 13th position. Of course, Logan Sargent had a few problems with a spin in the Williams, which dropped him uh, right to the back. And so Daniel did finish in 13th place. But 
you know, the big white elephant, as I'm going to call him now, because that's what he is with those Alpha Tori colours on. He just, he certainly didn't blow the doors off anyone. Now, obviously, it was his first race back. Hungary is a very tight and twitty circuit, so, you know, you have to get acclimatised to everything that was going on. But, you know, he still wasn't blowing the doors off of everyone else. He did beat Yuki, though. He did beat Yuki Snowda, so we have to give him props for that. But apart from that, 13th position is really not... I'd have been more impressed if he'd, if he'd have finished just outside the points. 11th place, I would have gone, yes, that's, that's pretty decent. But 13th is, well... It's unlucky for some, and it's definitely unlucky for Daniel Ricciardo. So, yeah, so that was basically the race. And then, of course, as as usual, as usual, the controversy only happens after the race. Yes, after the race. And we had some comments from Danica Patrick. Yes, Danica Patrick. Let's have a look at um, these comments from Danica Patrick. Now, this comes from... Uh, our friends, our friends at WTF1. <laughs> oh, yes. So let's have a look at what Danica Patrick said. And uh, apparently this was also said uh, during the F1 Juniors broadcast commentary as well. So not good. But anyway, Danica Patrick, she knows a thing or two about success in motorsport. And as a former IndyCar and NASCAR driver, she helped break barriers in the sport and inspire young women to do the same. However, during the Hungarian GP, her comments shocked many in the motorsport community, especially as her words were said to a young girl during the kid-led F1 Juniors broadcast. When asked by said girl if she would like to see women compete in Formula One, she said, As I've always said in my whole career, it takes 100 guys to come through to find a good one, and then it takes 100 girls. That takes a long time to find a good one, right? It's just the odds are not in favour of there always being one or being many of them. And then it started to unravel. And at the end of the day, I think that the nature of the sport is ma masculine. It's aggressive. Well, yeah, I, I would agree with that. You have to know how to handle the car. Not only just the car because that's skill, but the mindset that it takes to be really good is something that's not as normal in a feminine mind, a female mind. So basically what she's saying is to be as good as a man, you have to be as aggressive as a man. Now, I would take issue with that because as a female, she's got all the skills that are required to be aggressive. Yeah, if you... T don't take my word for that just upset any female that you know that you want wife girlfriend and you'll see how much skill she has in the aggression department yes so i do not agree with that whatsoever you have to be like for me i know if somebody tries to bow up to make it difficult on me i would go into like an aggressive kill mode right sounds like a t any woman to be honest <laughs> i don't know what all the fuss is about you just want to go after them, and that's just a, not a natural feminine fault. No, no, no. Totally disagree with you. Totally disagree. What you've got to remember is, yeah, there are female murderers in prison. So that is complete and utter bollocks, okay? Saying that, you know, it's not feminine to be aggressive. No, that is completely untrue. If, they, if, it, if that was the mindset, then... There would be no females in prison at all, would there? Because a lot of them are for very aggressive crimes. So no, I do not agree with that whatsoever. I say that because I've asked my friends about it and they're like, yeah, that's not how I think. Mm. So there you go. That was the controversy, apparently controversy. And a lot of people in the comments have agreed with... Danica Patrick. Now, I'm not a great love with Danica Patrick, to be honest, but, you know, I think she's sort of right and sort of wrong. Yeah, you have to you have to have an aggressive edge, but it's perfectly feasible for a female to have just as much aggression as a man. In fact, in some situations, more so. Have you ever seen two females fight? I'll tell you, you don't want to get inside, you know, you don't want to get in with that because that is i mean they literally pull each other's hairs out from the roots yes from the roots <laughs> you do not want to get involved in that so i totally disagree with the fact that she's saying that you know the mindset of a woman is not aggressive no 
normally he isn't. The female is supposed to be the more passive, the more calmer person compared to male. And in a lot of cases, that is true. But you have to remember that if you rile anyone up, they can be just as aggressive. And a female can be just as aggressive as, a, in fact, more so in certain situations. So, no, that's just total bollocks, in my opinion. <laughs> the usual um, lefty situation where someone says something and they all go, Oh, no, no, no. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It really is. So there you go. That is the comments uh, made by Danica Patrick. Um, someone's actually had a go at uh, Charlie Williams, who wrote the article there, saying, Charlie, you're a fool to play the card that she's disingenuous with her observations. She knows more about this sport than you ever will. So, so if she says you have to play the stereotypes, don't try to pick holes with your modern opinions to discredit her experience. That just about says it all. Now, of course, I, you know, I'm not saying if that's someone else's opinion. It's not mine. So, you know, but uh, that's what... And looking at her profile pictures, she is female. So, there you go. And as I say, yeah, it's absolute bullcrap. A female is very, very capable of being just as aggressive as a male. The problem with F1 is that it is a male-dominated sport and females... You know, to get there, you've got to be top of your game. That's the only reason why there isn't a female in Formula 1. It's got nothing to do with gender. Absolutely nothing to do with gender whatsoever. It's purely on the fact that you're not good enough. That's all it is. You're not good enough. Now, I'm always a component for, you know, equality. And I've always said that there's nothing that a man can do apart from uh, some very, very few and limited um, very heavy manual jobs but there's apart from that there's nothing that a female cannot do that a man does nothing at all but it's not about what you can do it's about ability and whether you can do it and females just don't seem to be up to the to the top line of formula one i don't know why i really don't know why because there really isn't anything holding them back except their own prejudices because whenever they can't make it into formula one they just had to complain about it yeah just complain about it i'd like to say there's someone i'm very very impressed with in motorsport right now and that's um well i like to call her sophie flourish but it's it's, it's the german driver sophia flush if, if i've got her name right she's German, so I may not have done, but Sophia Flush, she seems to just be getting on with it. You don't hear her complaining about, you know, oh, I'm not getting very far, whatever. She just goes out there, drives whatever series she's in, because she's, she's going through quite a few different series at the moment, and she just seems to get on with the job. Now, of course, Sophie, as you know, came back from a horrific injury to her, to her spine, so, you know, this is the thing. She knows how to fight back from adversity and just get on with it. Whereas a lot of these women that are complaining about it are just moaning. Just moaning. That, oh, no. Yeah. Just just get on with it. And then you might actually get the top job in Formula One. Because there isn't actually anything stopping you from getting the top job. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. Apart from maybe your own moaning. Yes. That's all it is. So there you go. So that was the Grand Prix of Hungary. Nothing happening during the race. But a few controversial uh, comments from uh, Danica Patrick. Which, as I say, is just uh, lefty, left-wing bullshit. So there you go. That was the uh, Grand Prix for Hungary. Let me know in the comments... Um, what you thought about the race? What did you think about Lulu? What did you think about Danica Patrick's comments? Do you think, you know, they were valid? Do you think she's talking out of her bottom? Who knows? Let me know, you lovely people, because you certainly know how to leave me lovely comments. So let me know. And also let me know um, whether this video has improved, because over the last few weeks, I've desperately tried to improve the uh, lip syncing of these videos. You may have noticed my uh, syncing has been at least one second out well it's been a it's been a hard struggle to try and sort it out but I, I think i may have got it now basically um 
it, the lip syncing was fine and then when I put it into my editor it was out so I used to adjust it so that it was correct and then when I uploaded it to YouTube it was back out again so YouTube somewhere along the line is also uh, putting in a little gap for the audio so it's been confusing me no end I've been trying behind the scenes for months to try and sort it out I think I may finally have done it so let me know if the lip syncing is correct bollocks <laughs> thank you everyone you've been awesome as always and i'll catch you again in the next video